uh, invite Matteo to, to join our conversation. Um, let me ask by how, how does a comic artist set about communicating science through art? <laughs> you know, I'm sure yeah. you've got some fantastic stories to share with us this evening. Yeah, and I actually I have some uh, slides to share since uh, most of what I do is visual. Um, so just to show you what I do exactly. Um, so yeah, as you already mentioned, I'm the multimedia producer for the Takeman Institute, which is the new neuroscience department of Columbia University. And uh, what we do essentially is that uh, our scientists do a lot of exciting science about the brain. Um, but as you may know, this research is written not always in the most friendly language. So we have an all communication team that um, we try to take this news, uh, this research, and turn into a more accessible format, which is not just visual, sometimes just a straightforward press release, sometimes it could be a short documentary about the scientist, and sometimes when there is really nothing concrete to show, that's where I come in, I do um, illustrations, animations, so it could be something like um, uh, like a basic diagram, graphic, uh, summarizing a paper. Uh, it could be a journal cover to submit to the publications or a full animation trying to explain how our brain kind of makes sense to the code of the world. Um, and the way I got to do this, um, just to give a bit more background, is that um, again, this has been mentioned before, but I have a background in neuroscience, so I was trained as a scientist. I did a whole PhD in computational neuroscience, which actually is not probably the most visual part of neuroscience. <laughs> but I always had this parallel interest in uh, comics. Um, I grew up reading comics and I love to draw, I love to write stories, so I slowly started making, started making my own comics, which I mean, maybe for us in like Italy or France, it's not that unusual, it's much more part of the culture, but uh, during my PhD, I was in the UK and definitely felt a bit weird as a hobby for a scientist. So I kept the two things very, very separate for a long time. Um, I was just, you know, doing my science by day and my drawing at night. I never thought they could combine um, until I kind of merged the two into this book, which I wrote with my, a colleague, she was a postdoc in my lab, and collaborator and friend, Hannah Ross. And this book, so again, just to get more um, into the um, how a comic is made. Uh, from the very beginning, we decided we didn't want to make a textbook in comic format. So it, um, as you can see, it's a story of a character that gets physically transported into the brain and finds himself Kind of confused uh, in, into this other world which at the beginning looks like a forest then we will learn it's a brain and from here it will go on all kind of uh, weird adventures meeting uh, scientists and other um, characters so as you can see it's not what you usually think of scientific illustrations it's very story driven uh, for a science book and uh, I, I don't know why, I think definitely this storytelling aspect played a big role, but for whatever reason, when, as soon as the book came out, it was very successful. Uh, people really loved it. It got translated now in more than 10 languages. And so that's what really kind of changed my career and, and put me on this, um, on this new, in this new world of science communication. And since then I've been doing many more comics and animation and recently also illustrations um, but they all have something similar so for example uh, i did a children book uh, about the brain in which the brain becomes a city and so the neurons the nerve cells are little characters that go around and uh, see the different jobs that neurons can do in the brain or i did the 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 comic with ERC comic, um, as we mentioned before, uh, which is always about the brain, is in collaboration with uh, Kern Verwake, who was a former colleague, actually, <laughs> a neuroscientist. And in this case, uh, it's a story of this um, kind of uh, med scientist who wants to build the model of the brain. 
And this, in this fantasy world, the brain is an ocean and neurons are kind of sea creatures and it's trying to recreate this big zoo aquarium, but it doesn't quite understand how it works though. Things don't go according to plan. And, and as you can see, so they're different, but they're, they're kind of the formula is the same. And I think at the center of all these are metaphors. And this is not something I made up. In fact, later on, I had the chance to um, add a scholarship from Colombia to think a bit more formally about what I was doing. And I, I got the chance to read a lot of history and philosophy of science. And yeah, it, essentially something a scientist don't often acknowledge, uh, but it's very clear that science needs metaphors. And not only when we try to communicate science, but really in the process of understanding, uh, especially new, intangible domains. And I think we have seen many examples here, like uh, the internet, social media, which we all use, but we don't quite understand how they work or, or the future, which uh, it's relevant for all of us, but we don't, don't get to see it. I think this is where science really needs something visual to think about these concepts. And, and so, yeah, this is what I've been doing. And, and I don't, I want to also, also make a disclaimer that I'm not arguing we should all start writing our articles with metaphors because metaphors are tricky and, and, right, and, and scientists are often skeptical of them and rightfully so because um, to make a metaphor of metaphors, <laughs> like I did in this comic, hopefully it's not too meta, but it's like, a, it's like a microscope, it's like a lens, like it can help you bring some things into focus but it also hides and distorts other details. So they're never, of course, a, a, a truthful representation, but they can be very useful. I definitely found them useful in my work. And I think general artists are, whether they know it or not, they are expert metaphorists, like every illustration, uh, every editorial illustration, if you pay attention, it's just a visual metaphor. And so I think that's really where scientists and artists can converge and collaborate and, and maybe artists have something to teach scientists like how to create a good metaphor uh, what works and what doesn't um, and yeah just to conclude going forward and trying to branch out beyond the brain beyond your science um, so I did a book about climate change for example where I was trying to visualize uh, CO2 emissions more concretely and I'm now working with Riva on a um, comic about green bonds, which maybe is like the biggest challenge yet, because it's not only about climate change, which is already difficult to visualize, but it's about also economy, it's this fiction that we all believe in, the market and how the two interact. So it's, yeah, it's, I think you're going to hear more about that in the next panel, but that's, I think, definitely an area where we need good visuals and good metaphors. Um, that's all I thank, you so, thank you so much, Matteo, because uh, as you say, metaphors and microscopes and considering neurons as notes on music or sea creatures, it's, you're taking us to a completely different world. This is absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much.